Good morning, everybody. Hi. Oh, my microphone. Jeez. I can't believe I keep getting that. There we go. <laughs> Honestly. All right. Once again, good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church. If you are a guest today, we open our arms and welcome you with great joy. I hope that as we understand our sense of church, as it expands and grows, and as we are experiencing that, we also recognize that our ministry remains vibrant and full and important. And so I hope you'll take a quick look at the what's happening, which is at the end of your service bulletin this morning. The first thing I want to say is that these are complicated times, and so our ability to be in prayer every day is important. And here at St. Bartholomew's, we have new day prayer every single day. So I also want to remind you that if there are things that would make your heart glad and your spirit rejoice that we prayed for, that you also give us a sense of that so that our noonday prayers can be and can embrace those with all the joy and energy that is possible. I also want to mention that there's some opportunities that I hope you'll take advantage of. One is that we are starting up our Sankofa circles through Zoom. These are wonderful small group opportunities to get to know one another, but also to do a little bit of study of scripture and some reflecting on Sunday sermons. And so if you would like to do that, please let the office know, preferably by tomorrow, so that we can begin to make sure that we can put those together and stay connected in that way as well. I also want to mention, of course, that some of you are graduating this year. And while the manner in which you're graduating might be changing, the fact that you are is not. And we want to celebrate and we want to rejoice in that. So let us know. Let us know when you're graduating, what might be happening next, so that we can celebrate that as a congregation. Finally, I want to mention just a couple of things that we can do as we reach out into the community, wherever your community happens to be. But if you're in this community, one of the things that's really important is that 40 West Assistance and Referral Center has been doing a phenomenal job of providing food for our neighbors, which we think is just going to continue to escalate as this time goes on. And so it's our turn now to help restock the 40 West Assistance and Referral Center shelves with food. And so you'll see in the what's happening that we're going to begin a food drive and you'll hear more about that. But what a great way for us to reach out and to be present with our neighbors. And the other way is to write a thank you. A thank you to some of the ministries that are taking place and the people who are making sure that we can continue to be a community of strength. I've already sent two letters, so I hope you'll join me in that. And that also is in the what's happening. But most of all today, we gather as a church, wherever we are, to be a community of faith and to be in communion with God. And so I invite us now to our opening hymn. Thank you.
season, and that means that alleluias can rise up from the depth of our being with joy and with power. And so as we open with our acclamation, I'm counting on the younger members of our community today to stand up and lead us in this, in the cacophony of joy, as we say together, all of this. to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. A reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Paul. While they were stoning Stephen, prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down, cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. infants long for pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good come to him a living stone though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight and like living stones yet let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ for it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of a corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, and they were destined to do so. Because you are chosen, are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches.
gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. Because I'm going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. resurrection community. A well-respected part of the community, evidently, since he was one of seven appointed by the apostles to be a deacon, and therefore to serve those in the community who needed support, like food, especially widows and orphans. Not a bad image for Mother's Day. So clearly, well-respected and esteemed by the early Christian community. But Stephen was also a bold, fearless, and occasionally brash young man who could not keep still or shut up about Jesus. So as he wandered about caring for the least, the last, and the lost, he also visited Hellenistic-based synagogues, talking about Jesus and challenging Judaic thought and practices. And finally, they had enough. So they hauled him off to Jerusalem and put him before the Sanhedrin, the primary supreme legal court of Jewish elders. 
and they accused him of blasphemy, of preaching against the temple and Mosaic law. And in chapter 7 of the book of Acts, Stephen could not keep still or shut up there either. And so in his speech before the highest court of Judaic judicial power, Stephen launched off on Israel's history, making three particular accusations. Number one, he begins with Abraham and Mesopotamia and God's call to Abraham there reminding everyone that God resides actually everywhere, not cooped up in a temple in Jerusalem, contained in the very center of that building. Second, that repeatedly God's people have rejected God's appointed leaders, like Moses, and then turned to other gods. So think golden calves a rather disobedient lot on occasion. And so thirdly, Stephen calls them actually a stiff-necked lot who resist the work of the Holy Spirit and most recently colluded with Rome and killed Jesus, who Stephen attests he has seen standing at the right side of God. In other words, the very person that they killed is now standing right next to God. Bold, fearless, and brash. Their anger at Stephen and what he was saying erupts, and they drag him out, and they stone him to death. And the apostles and the other members of this early Christian community this brave lot, well, they chose to get out of town and scatter. And so this bold, fearless, and brash young man named Stephen becomes the church's first martyr. The Greek word, by the way, for martyr means witness. This bold, fearless, and brash young man is a bold, fearless, and brash witness for Jesus. So how about you? Are you a bold, fearless, and even on occasion brash witness for Jesus? Or do you duck and get out of the way? Or does it kind of depend? Well, I wish I were bold and fearless for God in my words or in my actions, and even on occasion brash, despite my mother's druthers, I wish I could call some people stiff-necked and disobedient out loud. But what I think in times, what I think is truer actually in times is that I have only slivers of Stephen when it actually won't be too costly and especially if there are no stones involved. But if there are stones involved, I often wonder how far down I can duck. And I suspect I am not the only one today with exquisite ducking skills. Because I trust that when I duck, I will no doubt see some of you down there, if not all of you, on occasion as well. And I'm just saying I kind of appreciate the company. But that's not a very great place to live, to live in fear and avoidance. It's a kind of soul-sapping place to live. Instead, imagine if we could share also together moments of slivers of Stephen, when we could rise, fearless, bold for God, together, which I think is what the world needs right now. A lot. I think the world we live in right now, today, is incredibly unsettling and frightening. And not only because of our anxiousness and fear about the physical threats of a rampant virus, but also because 
it is becoming ever more apparent and will continue to become blatantly more apparent as the impact of this threat continues to unfold that the least, the last, and the lost will be even more so, which might include some of us as well. I think the world will require some come to Jesus efforts and moments. And so what will we do? Will we duck or will we witness? I like it if we could do a bit more of the latter and a little less of the former. But how? Especially when we are afraid and not very bold or fearless, much less brash. How can we do more witnessing and less ducking? Well, I want to know what gave Stephen his boldness and his fearlessness, that he could bear witness with power and conviction. What made that possible so he did not duck? I think Stephen knew the relentless nature of God's love, which is poured out with unhindered generosity, a love that cannot be destroyed or avoided by lies or stones or by walking away or plugging our ears. In a world of despair or hopelessness, the one thing, the one thing that is full of relentless power is God. God cannot be destroyed no matter how many times we nail him to a cross and roll stones to seal a tomb. God will not be destroyed but will rise. And why? Why? Because of God's relentless love for creation, love for the least, the last, and the lost. God's relentless love for every one of us when we are so afraid or hopeless that all we want to do is duck. But even there, even there, God comes and finds us and calls us back, back into the light. Darkness and death will not prevail. God will not have it so. And in 1 Peter it says today, if you were listening, our calling is to proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, a light that cannot be extinguished. So, witness or duck? I hope that we can trust the light and share with one another and the world, not some well-researched, crafted theology, but rather just what we know, what we have seen of God, how we have experienced Jesus, that's all. Just how we know God personally or as a community. As witnesses to the light, we can bring hope and opportunity not out of fear, but because that is what God gives us. When things are darkest, God gives us love and compassion and light, lights the way forward with power and promise. So witness or duck, maybe a bit of both for sure, but thanks to you to Jesus, a bit more of the former and maybe a lot less of the latter that we might find within ourselves and as a community wherever we are, some slivers of Stephen so that we might indeed be blazing beacons of God's transforming love in the world. Now I invite us to stand, if you are able, wherever you are, and let us reaffirm our joy and our delight in this God of extraordinary light as we say together the nice.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Empowered by the Lord's promise that we will do whatever we ask in his name, let us pray for the Church of God and for its leaders, that our lives may be for the glory of God alone. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. For more vigorous efforts to unite all Christian peoples, lest factions and jealousies spread, prevent the spread of the gospel, let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. For all who exercise the ministry of preaching, that their words may be full of the Spirit and of wisdom, let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. For those among us whose hearts are troubled and anxious, and those who are sick, remembering Lucy Marshall, Doris Hoy, Vince Marsiglia, Donna Cartwright, Janet Churchill, David Schneider, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Wybetta Dupree, Tony Creek, Mike Knudsen, Lib Shipley, Irene Hardy, Lillian Thomas, Teresa Sexton, Celia Vismael, Patrick Mellon, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Tim Wolfe, Tiger Watts, Peter Griffin, John Davis, David Chevron, Young Sam, Michelle Haney Madison, Kate Henshaw, Mary Warfield, Susan Lundeen, Adrian Barnes, Yogesh Patel, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, Hope Harbor Partner Families, those affected by the coronavirus, and any others we name at this time. May they find support through our care. Let us pray. We ask this, we ask in, Jesus. this in Jesus' name. For this parish community of St. Bartholomew's Church, that our belief in God will be deepened by the word and meals we share. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. For blessings great and small, which we receive from God, remembering the birthdays of Keith, 
Haney and Michelle Haney Madison, the 17th birthday of Megan Sullivan McPhillips, the 12th wedding anniversary of Randy and Amy Selleck, the life of Becky Selleck, and the first birthday of Althea Benkowski. We also celebrate parents today, especially moms rejoicing that Kate and Dylan Riley are expecting an addition to their family and remembering any others we name at this time. Happy birthday to my children. Mary Beth. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, all the moms. All mothers. May we always return thanks to God. Let us pray to the Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. For those who have died, remembering E. Leopold Edwards, Alice Joyner, Mildred R. Hoch, Estella I. Sullivan, William Penn, Hinton Shackelford, Lorraine Randall, Esther Thorne Selleck, and Ruth Olson Coble and any others we name at this time. May they find rest in God's mansion. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, we bring these and all our needs to you, filled with confidence in the power of Jesus' name. Hear us and answer our prayers in your great wisdom and love. We ask this through Christ, who is our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. And now, my sisters and my brothers, let us greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. To all of you, mm -hmm. yeah. bless you, all of you. Hugs, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, love. <laughs> there we are. Wow, what a treat to hear that lovely cacophony of sound as we greet one another and we continue to be a community of faith today. One of the ways that we are a community is the way that we share together. We share worship, we share our prayers, we share our ministry together but we also have the privilege of sharing a meal. And so I hope that you have near you a plate with a piece of bread and a cup with a libation in it of whatever, so that as we gather today, we can share a meal. Here at church, we share the Eucharist. We share this meal that embodies in it Jesus' care for us and God's strength and purpose for us. And while we can't do that where you are, nevertheless, where you are, you can share in the agape meal, really the major meal of the earliest church, the meal that people gather together to share and to form community. And so I hope that 
as we share whatever meal we can, we recognize that in the sharing of a meal, we find community with one another, and we do in fact find community with our God.
joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. And now, for those of you who have an agape opportunity in front of you, I invite us to pray together over whatever bread or cracker you have. And I invite you to listen for our deep and wonderful Judaic connection. Ready? Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies, may also hunger for the food of everlasting life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, this prayer over whatever cup or glass that you have near you as well. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this drink which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us share our meals together. Now I hope you'll join me with the post-communion prayer. My Jesus, Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. 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 